Hello students, I welcome you to the fourth session of inverse Laplace transform. This is for the advanced mathematics 4 for lateral entry students. We have already discussed the three sessions on inverse Laplace transforms. In the previous session, uh, we had the problems on these two formulas. The functions divided by s in the last session we discussed real inverse of the function of s divided by s problem. There we use the Laplace transform of integral formula. F s is a function of s, it is divided by s. We use one integration with respect to t with the limit 0 to t find the inverse of such problems. Wherever s square is there in the denominator, you use two times the integration of the function. The another type also we discussed Laplace inverse of trigonometric or logarithmic functions. So, clearly you can uh, clearly you can understand the functions containing the trigonometric or logarithmic. There is a only one formula this one is L inverse of f n s is equal to minus 1 raise to n t raise to n f of t. So, here f n s is the derivative of the function f s n times it is. So, depending on the function problems may require only one derivative may require two derivatives depending on the function of s. So, use according to this formula. So, now still there are other type of examples. There is a second shifting theorem, there are problems on using second shifting theorem. Here the inverse of the function of s into e raise to minus a s, there are examples some function of h s which are multiplied by exponential term e raise to minus a s, those you can recognize them. Then we have to use the second shifting theorem, already you know the second shifting theorem from the unit step function in the Laplace transform chapter. That is statement is the Laplace transform of f of t minus a into u of t minus a is equal to e raise to minus a s because of minus a it is multiplied e raise to minus a s into f of s. What is f of s? f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. So, now taking this l on this side we can rewrite the statement as L inverse of e raise to minus a s into f of s is equal to f of t minus a into u of t minus a. So, what is u of t minus a? It is an unit step function. There are two types of unit step, one is u of t at the origin, this one is u of t minus a displaced unit step function. Its values are defined here, u is equal to 0 if t is less than a up to a its value is 0. If t is greater than or equal to a, its value is 1. Suddenly, at t equal to a, its value is 1. So, that function is the unit step function that is displaced means a units are displaced from the origin. So, you see the examples concerned to this uh, theorem. One of the example is find L inverse of 1 plus e raise to minus 3 s divided by s square. So, look into this uh, example there is a term in the function e raise to minus 3 s. So, I divide each term by the denominator, see that L inverse of 1 upon s square is one term plus L inverse of e raise to minus 3 s upon s square. So, splitting into two terms. The first term is simple, it is inverse of the direct uh, standard functions. We know the inverse of 1 upon s square that is t, L inverse of t is uh, L of t is 1 upon s square. So, inverse of 1 by s square is t. So, coming to the second term, we cannot write directly it is L inverse of 1 by s square. So, e raise to minus a s is multiplied, a is 3 here. For that, we refer the second shifting theorem. What is the second shifting theorem? Any function of s is multiplied by e raise to minus a s. Here, the function of s is 1 upon s square f of s is 1 upon s square, it is multiplied by e raise to minus 3 s. So, what is a here? a is 3. So, according to the second shifting theorem that is written as f of t minus a u of t minus a. So, I know f of t, what is f of t? It is the inverse of 
एफ एस इनवर्स ऑफ वन बै एस स्क्वायर इनवर्स ऑफ वन बै एस स्क्वायर इज टी सो दट इज एफ आफ टी सो एज पर् दि तेरम एफ आफ टी मैनस ए सो इन द इन इन द फंक्षन एफ आफ टी पुट टी ईक्वल टू टी मैनस थ्री इयर ए इज थ्री सो द टी बिकम्स टी मैनस थ्री इयर दिस इज एफ आफ टी मैनस थ्री बिकॉज एफ आफ टी इज टी एफ आफ टी मैनस थ्री इज टी मैनस थ्री इन टू द यूनिट स्टेप फंक्षन यू आफ टी मैनस थ्री सो दिस कंप्लीट द इनवर्स आफ सच प्रॉब्लम दिस यू लुक इन टू द अदर एग्जापल एल इनवर्स आफ सेवन इंटू इ रेस टू मैनस फोर एस डिवैडेड बै एस स्क्वायर अगेन वी टेक् सेवन एज ए कॉन्स्टेंट ऊट सैड द रिमेनिंग इज एल इनवर्स आफ इ रेस टू मैनस फोर एस इंटू वन अपन एस स्क्वायर सो एक्सेप्ट द टर्म इ रेस टू मैनस फोर एस द रिमेनिंग इज द फंक्षन आफ एस वी नो द इनवर्स आफ दिस वन बै एस स्क्वायर सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज सेवन इंटू एल इनवर्स आफ इ रेस टू मैनस फोर एस एफ एस सो एफ एस इज इयर वन अपन एस स्क्वायर ई नो द इनवर्स आफ वन बै एस स्क्वायर दट इज टी बै सैकेंड शिफ्टिंग थेरम द अब प्रॉब्लम दिस इ रेस टू मैनस ए एस इंटू एफ एस वी नो दैट सेवन इंटू एफ आफ टी मैनस ए यु आफ टी मैनस ए ई नो द वैल्यू आफ ए इयर इट इज इ रेस टू मैनस आफ एस एज फोर सो डैरेक्टली सब्सटूटिंग ई नो एफ आफ टी एफ आफ टी इज टी एफ आफ टी मैनस ए इज टी मैनस फोर इट इज एंड यु आफ टी मैनस ए इज यु आफ टी मैनस ए सो आल दीज प्रॉब्लम्स दोज फंक्शन मल्टीप्लाइड वित् एक्सपोनशियल दे कंटेन द यूनिट स्टफ फंक्षन सी सिमिलर एग्जापल इयर फै इंटू इ रेस टू मैनस टू एस डिवैडेड बै एस स्क्वयर प्लस सिक्स टेन यू कैन ईजली क्लासीफा टेक द कॉन्स्टेंट टर्म फाइव एल इनवर्स आफ टेक द एक्सपोनशियल टर्म सपरेटली इ रेस टू मैनस टू एस द रिमेनिंग रेस्ट आफ दि फंक्षन इज यू काल इट एस एफ आफ एस इयर एफ आफ एस इज वन अपन एस स्क्वयर प्लस सिक्सटीन एफ आफ एस इज वन अपन एस स्क्वयर प्लस सिक्सटीन हूज इनवर्स इज नोन इयर इनवर्स आफ दैट फंक्षन इज नोन टू अस सो वट इज दैट एफ आफ टी इज ईक्वल टू इट इज द सिमर टू बी ए डिवैडेड बै एस स्क्वयर प्लस ए स्क्वयर इट इज द एल इनवर्स आफ सैन फंक्षन सो फोर डिवैडेड बै इट शुड बी फोर डिवैडेड बै एस स्क्वयर प्लस फोर स्क्वयर सो फोर शुड बी देर इन द न्यूमरेटर दट इज वाई वि डिवैडेड वन अपन फोर इंटू सैन फोर टी इट इज इनवर्स आफ एफ आफ एस इज वन बै फोर सैन फोर टी नव द सैकेंड शिफ्टिंग थेरम इज अड इयर एल इनवर्स आफ इ रेस टू मैनस ए एस इंटू एफ आफ एस इज ईक्वल टू एफ आफ टी मैनस ए यू आफ टी मैनस ए सो ए वैल्यू इज टू ई नो एफ आफ टी इयर सो ई नो एफ आफ टी दिस इज सो फै इंटू एज पर् दि प्रॉब्लम फै इंटू एफ आफ टी मैनस ए एंड यू आफ टी मैनस ए सो ए वैल्यू इज नोन सब्सटूट एफ आफ टी इज वन बै फोर सैन फोर टी इन दिस यू सब्सटूट टी मैनस टू सो इट इज फै बै फोर इंटू सैन आफ फोर टी इज रिप्लेस बै टी मैनस ए दट इज टी मैनस टू इंटू यू आफ टी मैनस टू सो आल द आंसर्स कंटेन द यूनिट स्टेफ फंक्षन सिमिलर टू दैट सी अनदर एग्जापल टू इंटू टू इज टेकन अवट सैड एल इनवर्स आफ यू सपरेट द एक्सपोनशियल टर्म इ रेस टू मैनस ए एस इंटू द रिमेनिंग इज कंसिडर्ड एस एफ आफ एस सो इयर एफ आफ एस इज वन अपन एस प्लस थ्री ई नो द इनवर्स आफ दिस फंक्षन दट इज इ रेस टू मैनस थ्री टी सो एफ आफ टी इज इ रेस टू मैनस थ्री टी अल्लाय द सैकेंड शिफ्टिंग थेरम दट इज एफ आफ टी मैनस ए यु आफ टी मैनस ए इन दिस ए वैल्यू इज नोन दट इज द एक्सपोनशियल कोफिशेंट आफ एस दट इज फाइव सो टू टाइम्स एज पर् दिस एफ आफ टी मैनस ए यु आफ टी मैनस ए सो टू इंटू एफ आफ टी इज इ रेस टू मैनस थ्री टी वट इज एफ आफ टी मैनस फाइव सो इन प्लेस आफ टी यू सब्सटूट टी मैनस फाइव दट इज वाई इ रेस टू मैनस थ्री इंटू टी टी इज टी मैनस फाइव बिकाज एफ आफ टी मैनस फाइव इंटू द यूनिट स्टेफ फंक्षन यु आफ टी मैनस फाइव सो दिस इज द इनवर्स आफ द गिवन एग्जापल सो लाइक दैट यू कैन साल्व एनी नंबर आफ प्रॉब्लम्स इयर इयर देर आर टू टर्म्स यू मेक इट सपरेटली इ रेस टू मैनस फाइव एस अपन एस स्क्वयर प्लस वन इज वन प्रॉब्लम 
and s into e raise to minus 2 pi s divided by s square plus 4 is another problem. See here the second term L inverse of I separate exponential e raise to minus pi s the remaining is function of s. This is the uh, first term simplification plus the second term take out the exponential term L inverse of e raise to minus 2 pi s the remaining you consider as g of s that is s divided by s square plus 4 a. So, there are these two are the separate examples as far as a is constant is there. So, one is f of s that is taken 1 divided by s square plus 1, g s is another second term example s divided by s square plus 4. I know the inverse of both the functions f of s and g of s. So, inverse of 1 divided by s square plus 1 is a standard one, it is the inverse is sin t and this also standard one s divided by s square plus 4, it is inverse is cosine of 2 t because of 2 square it is cos 2 t. Now, I am clubbing these two terms using the second shifting theorem. For the first term f of t minus a u of t minus a using f of t function, second term g of t minus b and u of t minus b using the second term. So, here I separate a and b values a for the first term b for the second term. So, in the first term a is the coefficient of s that is my pi e raise to minus a s a value is pi. In the second term a value is 2 pi. So, substitute accordingly f of t minus a is f of t is sin t. So, replace t is equal to t minus pi. So, sin of t minus pi and the unit step function u of t minus pi that completes the first term solution. Coming to second term g of t is cos 2 t in that t you substitute t minus 2 pi. So, cos of 2 into t minus 2 pi and u of t minus 2 pi. Simplifying further what is the sin of t minus pi? It is we can also write pi minus t using minus sign outside sin of minus theta is minus sin theta that is why we can rewrite this as sin of 180 minus t using minus sin outside. Sin 180 minus t is it is in the third uh, second quadrant sin is positive you write it as minus of sin sin t. Sin of 180 minus t is sin t by reversing t minus pi as pi minus t that is the minus sign u of t minus pi as it is. Coming to second term cos of t minus 2 pi is same as 2 pi minus t because cos minus theta is plus cos theta. So, even if you interchange these two terms it will not affect the sign here t minus 2 pi is same as pi minus 2 pi. So, cos of 2 pi minus t is it is in the first quadrant so, cos t. So, cos of 2 into t its value and u of t minus 2 pi that is the unit step function. So, in this way we can use the second shifting theorem. So, there are this similar example similar to the previous problem you can use. Now, we will move to the another concept here inverse Laplace transform using the cannulation theorem. There are problems we can apply cannulation theorem. For example, the function is 1 divided by s square into s square plus 16. So, I can class I can split into two functions f s into g s, where f of s is 1 by s square, g of s is 1 by s square plus 16. So, in from the given function, I can split into two functions. The inverse Laplace transform of the given function can be determined by writing in the partial fraction this problem we can use it partial fractions and solve that. Otherwise, we know the inverse Laplace transform of f of s and also g of s both the inverses are known to us. So, we cannot write even knowing them we cannot write Laplace transform of f of t into g of t is not equal to f s into g s we cannot write the Laplace transform of product is equal to product of their Laplace transform. So, there comes the cannulation property what is this cannulation? Cannulation is there are two functions let f of t and g of t 
be any two functions defined in the interval 0 to infinity. Then the convolution of those two functions f of t into g of t is denoted by the symbol star l f of t star g of t and it is defined as the integral here. The definition of the convolution f of t star g of t is the integration from 0 to t f of u is a dummy variable f of u g of t minus u then integrate with respect to u. So, here star indicates the convolution it is not the product. So, there comes after the definition of convolution the Laplace is applied to the convolution of two functions. What is the convolution theorem for Laplace transform? So, the Laplace transform of the convolution of two functions is nothing but the product of their individual Laplace transforms. So, Laplace transform of f star g that is a convolution Laplace transform of convolution of two functions f of t star g of t is equal to the product of their individual Laplace transform means Laplace transform of one function into Laplace transform of another function that is nothing but f of s is the transform of one function into g of s is the transform of another function. So, the statement of the convolution theorem is it is not simply a product Laplace transform of the convolution of f of t into g of t is the product of their individual Laplace transform. So, using that convolution theorem I modify it into for inverse problems. So, L is taken on the right hand side L inverse of f of s into g of s this is g of s L inverse of f of s into g of s is equal to that is convolution f of t star g of t once you write f f t star g of t that is the convolution property 0 to t f of u g of t minus u d u. Here the star is the convolution operator. So, this formula is referred to find the inverse of some examples wherever it is possible to separate the two functions f s and g s use the convolution theorem what is that statement of that using the inverse L inverse of the product of two functions of s is equal to the convolution of their f of t into g of t. See the examples on this one of the example find L inverse of phi divided by s cube into bracket s plus 4. So, here I, I am able to split up into two functions. So, from the given example phi divided by s cube into s plus 4 it is given I can write it as phi is a constant one of the function I write 1 upon s cube the another function is 1 upon s plus 4. So, I am able to split up into product of two functions of s one function is 1 upon s cube another function is 1 upon s plus 4. So, I rewrite again I know the inverse of those two the those two functions are writ written accordingly I know the inverse of those two we know the inverse of those two functions uh, it is 1 upon s cube I have made it as 2 upon s cube it is simple to write the inverse we know we know directly the inverse of 2 upon s cube that is why 2 is multiplied and divided by and other function 1 upon s plus 4 is written. So, I take two functions as one is f of s that is 2 upon s cube the other one is g of s that is 1 upon s plus 4. So, I know the inverse of those two functions the first one what is the inverse of f of s what is the inverse of 2 upon s cube use the formula 1 upon s raised to n it is directly t square the Laplace transform of t square is 2 factorial divided by s raised to 3 it is a direct one Laplace transform of t square is 2 factorial that is 2 divided by s cube. The other one is simple 1 upon s plus 4 g of t it is the inverse of 1 upon s plus 4 it is also direct one e raise to minus 4 a t s plus e s plus a means e raise to minus a t a is 4 here. So, I know the f of t and g of t then apply the convolution theorem. So, the convolution theorem is the L inverse of f of s into g of s it is a product of the functions of s is equal to convolution of their inverses 
convolution of f of t into g of t that is the integral form 0 to t f of u g of t minus u d u. So, write accordingly what is f of u from g f of t and what is g minus t u g of t u from g of t. So, here f of t is t square accordingly f of u is equal to replace t is equal to u this becomes f of u that is u square u square. This phi by 2 is taken from the beginning of the simplification phi by 2 is here that is as it is kept here the remaining is from the convolution theorem. So, f of u is u square then g of t minus u g of t is known e raise to minus 4 t. So, replace t is equal to t minus u in this expression t is equal to t minus u it becomes g of t minus u here also e raise to minus 4 t minus u e raise to minus 4 t is replaced by t minus u t minus u d u. Now, integrate with respect to u that completes the inverse of the problem phi by 2 it is integration with respect to u. So, I take the functions of t they are independent of u take out of the integral sign see here e raise to minus 4 t it is a constant because we are integrating with respect to u here. So, other than u terms they are treated as constants here we can take out of the integral symbol. So, phi by 2 e raise to minus 4 t you consider them as the constant terms taken outside the integral symbol. The remaining only the functions of u consider inside the integral u square into e raise to minus 4 into minus u that is 4 u. So, this you integrate with respect to u phi by 2 e raise to minus 4 t is a constant 0 to t u square e raise to 4 u d u use the integration by parts. Now, I am using the general integration by parts what is the general integration by parts see here this term as it is phi by 2 e raise to minus 4 t now apply the general integration in one step we will we will get the answer for that. So, consider one of the term that is a polynomial term u square is the algebraic term you consider the one term the other one is the second term. The first term as it is u square as it is the integration of the second term this is the procedure of general integration by parts one term u square as it is integration of the second term e raise to 4 u integration is e raise to 4 u divided by 4 then minus is alternative symbols we have to use next term is minus sign what is this this is the differentiation of u square differentiation of u square is 2 u then the second bracket is the integration of the second bracket e raise to 4 u upon 4 its integration again with respect to u that is e raise to 4 u divided by 1 more 4 that is 16. What we have done is first term as it is second term integration minus the differentiation of the first bracket integration of the second bracket. Next sign is plus here alternative symbols minus plus minus plus. So, here plus this 2 how it comes the differentiation of again the previous first bracket 2 u differentiation is 2 then the second bracket is the integration of the second bracket e raise to 4 u divided by 16 its integration with respect to u is multiplying again 4 in the denominator e raise to 4 u upon 64. The next term will be minus sign differentiation of the first bracket differentiation of 2 becomes 0 that is why we stopped the process here. So, you, you continue this process until you get a single term single term means only the term is e raise to 4 u this becomes the constant next term the differentiation of 2 becomes 0 that is why we stopped the process. So, this is very useful whenever integration by parts we can apply this. Now, after the integration we substitute the limits here in place of u, u is equal to t that is upper limit u equal to 0 lower limit. So, putting u equal to t here t square e raise to 4 u becomes 4 t divided by 4 minus um, lower limit you substitute u equal to 0 the entire term is 0 that is neglected here minus u equal to t 2 t then u equal to t e raise to 
4 t divided by 16. Again the lower limit when u is 0, the entire term becomes 0 that is neglected here plus the third term u equal to t 2 into e raise to 4 t divided by 64 minus the lo lower limit you will get here. There is no u term in here 2 into e raise to 0, 2 into e raise to 0 this bracket becomes 1 divided by this the numerator becomes 1 divided by 64. So, 2 into 64 it is 1 upon 32. So, this simplifies the integration part. Now, you multiply e raise to minus 4 t into each bracket e raise to minus 4 t into e raise to plus 4 t that is 1. So, 5 by 2 the term remaining is t square by 4 this into this it is e raise to 0 1 minus uh, 2 by 16 2 by 16 is 1 upon 8 t into again minus 4 t plus 4 t this is 1. Here 2 by 64 is 1 upon 32 e raise to minus 4 t into e raise to 4 t that is also 1. This term is separated because there is no exponential term multiplied here. So, directly multiplying e raise to minus 4 t with 1 upon 32. So, 5 divided by 2 into 32 is 64 e raise to minus 4 t. So, this completes the inverse of given problem by convolution theorem. So, one can think of why only inverse, uh, why only by convolution theorem. The same problem we can solve it by using the partial fraction method also. There is no restriction on applying the partial fraction here. This is uh, by partial fraction, see the linear factor S is a linear factor repeated three times, the another linear factor is S plus 4. So, what we can write is by the partial fraction method the same problem a divided by s b divided by s square c divided by s cube plus d divided by s plus 4 then calculate the values of a b c d that also gives the same answer here so all the almost all the problems on convolution theorem we can solve it through uh, partial fraction method take another example use convolution theorem this also we can apply partial fraction it looks like a partial fraction problem a divided by s minus 2 b divided by s plus 3 or apply convolution. For convolution theorem we need to split up the given function into two known functions. One function is a 1 upon s minus 2 that is f of s, another function is 1 upon s plus 3 that is g of s. So, I know the inverse of both f s and g s then only you consider f s and g s and there the transforms are f of t is the inverse of 1 divided by s minus 2 directly it is e raise to 2 t. It is of the type 1 upon s minus a e raise to 2 t. Other one also a is minus 3. So, g of t is equal to e raise to minus 3 t. So, I know the inverse of both f of s and g of s then it is possible to apply the convolution theorem. The convolution theorem is L inverse of the product of two functions of s is equal to convolution of their inverses f of t star star is the convolution once you write the star it is the integral 0 to t f of u g of t minus u du. So, what are the values of g f of u and g of t minus u using f of t and g of t right here. So, f of t is e raise to 2 t what about f of u here f of u is put t is equal to u, you will get f of u, f of u is e raise to 2 u, e raise to 2 u. Similarly, g of t minus u means put t equal to t minus u here, replace t by t minus u. So, e raise to minus 3 into t, t means t minus u here, then d u. Now, it is the integration with respect to u. Now, I am taking the other than u terms as a constant outside the integral sign. So, what is the constant term here e raise to minus 3 t e raise to minus 3 t it is independent of u. So, I can take outside the integral nothing to do with the integration. So, remaining you keep as it is here e raise to 2 u into e raise to minus 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 plus it is e raise to minus minus plus 3 u. So, e raise to 2 u into e raise to 3 u. So, base is e we can add the powers. 
So, e raise to 2 u plus 3 u total it is e raise to 5 u d u. Now, do the integration with respect to u. e raise to minus 3 t is a constant as it is. Integration of e raise to 5 u, it is a simple integration e raise to 5 u divided by 5. Now, apply the limits 0 to t. So, e raise to minus 3 t divided by 5 constant put uh, u equal to t upper limit that is e raise to 5 t minus put u equal to 0 that is lower limit e raise to 0 its value is 1. So, e raise to minus uh, e raise to 5 t minus 1. So, multiplying the outside term e raise to minus 3 t into this e raise to minus 3 t into e raise to 5 t simplifying these two it is e raise to 2 t minus e raise to minus 3 t into 1, it is e raise to minus 3 t. So, in this way, the convolution theorem is useful in finding the inverse problem. The same problem I told you, use partial fractions, then obtain the constants. Look into other examples, these are the standard examples 1 upon s square plus a square whole square, 1 upon s square plus a square whole square. Because of whole square, we can able to write f s and g s. The f s function you consider 1 upon s square plus a square and g s also same 1 upon s square plus a square. Multiplying these two f s into g s, it is our given problem 1 upon s square plus a square bracket square is given that is why both f of s and g of s are same. Once f s and g of s are same, their inverse transforms are also same. What is the inverse of 1 upon s square plus a square? it looks like a similar to sin a t function. What is the Laplace transform of sin a t? That is a divided by s square plus a square. So, a is missing in the numerator. I can multiply and divide a. So, that is why sin a t divided by a because of a is missing here divided by a. Similarly, the g of t is also same. When f s and g f are same, their inverse f of t and g of t they are same. Once we know f of t and g of t, we can go for the convolution theorem. L inverse of f of s into g of s is equal to f of t star g of t. That is 0 to t f of u g of t minus u d u. So, substitute in place of f of u and g of t minus u. f of t is sin a t by a. What is f of u? Simply substituting t is equal to u that is sin a u divided by a. This is f of u. Similarly, g of t minus u. g of t is sin a t by a. Put t equal to t minus u in that that is sin of a into in place of t it is t minus u divided by a. So, both are substituted here. Now, integrate this. Before the integration, you can use the trigonometric properties to get the simplified integration. So, what to do here? Sin a u another one is sin a into t minus u. So, 1 upon a square is a constant it take outside. So, I multiply 2 and divided by 2 here multiplying 2 and divided by 2. So, that is why 1 upon 2 a square the 2 is multiplied here. So, inside the integral it becomes 2 into sin a u 2 into sin a u into sin of a into t minus u d u. Now, do the integration of this part. So, we cannot directly um, integrate this function. I use the trigonometric relations. One of the relation is it is similar to the standard trigonometric relation 2 into sin a sin b. There are four trigonometric properties 2 sin a into sin b, sin a into cos b, cos a into cos b, cos a into sin b, all the four possibilities that it is similar to 2 sin a, a is capital A is a into u and b is a t minus a u. You identify the capital A and capital B values. So, 2 into it is similar to sin capital A, capital A is a u, capital B is this. So, for that this is the identity 2 sin a into sin b is equal to it is cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b. I know cos of a minus b is cos a cos b 
plus sin A sin B and cos of A plus B is cos A cos B minus sin A sin B adding subtracting them sin term uh, cosine terms cancels remaining 2 times sin A into sin B. So, using this identity here cos of see the next slide 1 upon A 2 A square cos of A minus B this is A minus B A and B are known here A u B is A t minus A u cos of A minus B A u A t minus A u means A u and A u are added here 2 A u minus A t apply A minus B A u minus of A t minus A u. So, minus minus plus A u plus A u 2 A u minus A t that is why it is 2 A u minus A t minus cos A minus B uh, A plus B here adding them A u and minus A u cancels here while adding A u and minus A u cancels remaining is A t that is why the second term is cos of A t. Now, uh, our problem the product of two trigonometric functions is splitted into sum of the two trigonometric functions. Now, it is easy to integrate. Now, integrating with respect to u each term here, what is the integration of cosine cos of this angle 2 a u minus a t that is with respect to u. So, cosine integration is sin 2 a u minus a t divided by 2 a y divided by 2 a that is the coefficient of u we are integrating with respect to u that is why the 2 a is divided coefficient of u that is 2 a in this problem. So, 2 a is divided minus again cos cos a t integration of cos a t with respect to u the entire cos a t I consider as constant here because there is no u term here cos a t a and t they are constants I am integrating with respect to u the entire term cos a t is a constant what is the integration of constant with respect to u that is u only. So, that is why u is multiplied this is a constant cos a t into u. So, this completes the integration with respect to u. Now, next is to substitute the limiting values u is equal to t and u is equal to 0 substitute here 1 upon 2 a square put uh, u is equal to t here u is equal to t means 2 a t minus a t 2 a t minus a t is a t it is. So, that is why sin a t divided by 2 a next lower limit lower limit u equal to 0 u equal to 0 what happens u equal to 0 sin minus a t 2 a u term becomes 0 it is sin of minus a t I have substituted in place of u u equal to 0 sin of minus a t that is minus sin a t. So, already minus sin is there while substituting upper limit minus the lower limit minus of minus into minus this becomes plus that is why sin a t divided by 2 a. So, these two terms are uh, by putting the upper limit and lower limit to the first term. Coming to the second term put u is equal to t. So, in place of u the upper limit t cos a t as it is cos a t as it is minus the lower limit u equal to 0 the entire term becomes 0 that is why it is neglected. So, this simply this is the simplification of substituting the limits. Now, sin a t these two are similar terms same terms adding them divided by 2 is there. So, that 2 it goes out to 1 1 by 2 1 by 2 adding that is 1. So, 1 upon 2 a square sin a t divided by a minus t into cos a t that is the inverse of the problem 1 divided by a square plus a square whole square. So, you can take the LCM here a is multiplied here that is why 2 it is a cube. 2 a square into a 2 a cube sin a t minus a is multiplied here a t into cos a t. So, this is the inverse of 1 upon a square plus a square whole square. Similarly, you can consider 
these examples. One can assign f s is equal to s divided by s square plus a square and g s is equal to s divided by s square plus a square. Both are same here because s square divided by s square plus a square whole square is there. Both f s and g s are same functions s divided by s square plus a square another one s divided by s square plus a square. In the example 4, L inverse of s divided by s square plus a square whole square. Here one of the function you consider s in the numerator, other one you consider 1 upon s square plus a square. In this problem, one of the function is 1 upon s plus 1, the other one g s is 1 upon s square plus 9. And here it is clear 1 upon s, the other one is 1 upon s square plus a square. So, one of the problem we can consider here. Find the L inverse of the fourth one you consider L inverse of S divided by S square plus A square whole square. So, in this uh, problem I take I simplify into product of two functions s divided by s square plus a square whole square. I rewrite it as s divided by s square plus a square is one term and 1 divided by s square plus a square is another term. So, multiplying these two is exactly the given problem. So, I consider one of the function is f s and other one is g s. I know the inverse of both f s and g s. What is f of t? f of t is L inverse of f s. So, that is L inverse of s divided by s square plus a square. This is the standard one. It is directly a cos of a t. f of t is cos of a t. Similarly, the other function g of t, it is L inverse of g of s that is equal to L inverse of 1 divided by s square plus a square. So, it is matching with our table values a divided by s square plus a square. So, I multiply it is not a is absent here multiply and divide a that is by the inverse of that is 1 upon a into sin a t. So, we got the inverse of both f s and g s. Now, apply the cannulation theorem. Cannulation theorem that is L inverse of the product of the two functions f s into g s product of two functions is equal to f of t star it is star is cannulation g of t it is not the product here f of t into star g of t that is nothing but the integral 0 to t f of u g of t minus u integration with respect to u. I know f of t and g of t substituting here 0 to t. So, from f of t f of t is cos a t f of t is cos a t. So, we can write f of u, u means putting t is equal to u that becomes cos of a u, cos a t becomes cos a u and other term g of t minus u, g of t is sin a t 1 upon a, 1 upon a sin of a t means t minus u, t minus u d u. Now, it is cos a u 1 upon a into that. So, I write it as 1 upon a 0 to t like a previous example I can write 2 into sin of a into t minus u cos of a u d u why 2 is multiplied I can take 2 divided by. Now, I use the trigonometric property 2 sin a into cos b 
what is 2 sin A into cos P. There is a trigonometric identity 2 sin A into cos B. What is that? Sin of A plus B plus sin of A minus B. What is sin of A plus B? Sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. Then sin of A minus B is sin A cos B minus cos A sin B. So, cos A sin B term cancels here. So, you will get 2 times of sin A into cos B. What is A here? In our problem, A is A T minus A U, B is A U. So, A plus B you can calculate. A plus B means adding these two A T minus 2 A U and A minus B is A minus B is uh, A plus B means A U cancels, A U cancels, A minus B is A T minus 2 A U. So, we can write A plus B in place of A plus B that is A T A minus B is A minus A T minus 2 U. Now, using that our integral becomes 1 upon 2 A 0 to T 2 A sin B I can write sin of uh, A plus B that is A U A T sin of A T into uh, plus sin of A T minus 2 A U D U that is the split of using the trigonometric relation. Now, integrate easily. 1 upon 2 a. So, this is a constant with respect to u. So, u into sin a t. Here, uh, integration of sin that is minus cos of a t minus 2 a u. So, integration of sin is minus cos divided by the coefficient of u. Coefficient of u is 2 a that completes 0 to t. Now, substituting limits u equal to t and u equal to 0 to a, u equal to t that becomes t into sin a t minus 1 upon 2 a that is constant. Put a u equal to t, put u equal to t here cos of a t minus 2 a t that is cos of minus a t put u equal to t here a t minus 2 a t that is minus a t. Now, the lower limit u equal to 0 it is cos a t. So, that completes the substitution of the limits. So, look into these two terms I am telling these two are same cos of minus a t is cos a t cos of minus a t is cos a t. So, these two are same we can cancel it the finally, the inverse of that is 1 upon 2 a t into sin a t using the cannulation theorem. So, coming to the conclusion, we have discussed uh, many formulas to find out the inverse Laplace transform. We can summarize them. L inverse of any function of x, if it is available in the table of transforms, we can use the table of standard transform, then write the inverse. The other type when f of s, L inverse of f of s by the first shifting theorem, if the terms are usable to first shifting theorem, you refer and find the inverse of that. And uh, some problems in the denominator, if you are able to complete the square, that process is completing square method. And, uh, there are problems using the partial fractions when the denominator is is factorizable to linear or quadratic or repeated linear repeated quadratic use the partial fraction method the other one is whenever the function of s any function of s divided by s use the theorem l inverse of fs divided by s integrate f of t or the same problem can be solved by partial fraction method then uh, this is the cannulation now discussed. Whenever 
it is possible to split up the two functions from the given function f s and g s apply convolution theorem. And uh, this is the unique formula whenever inverse L inverse of the trigonometric functions or logarithmic functions we can easily identify them apply L inverse of f n s is equal to minus 1 raise to n t raise to n f of t. So, here f n s means differentiation of f with respect to x depending on the function depending on the availability of the inverses go, go for the derivatives. You may require first derivative after the first derivative check for the inverse inverses are available stop the process. If they are not available go for the second derivative and check the inverses then apply the formula. Uh, this one also unique wherever the functions are multiplied by e raise to minus e s you apply the second shifting theorem that is f of t minus a u is the unit step function. So, here the important is the partial fractions we use most of the methods they overtake by partial fraction instead of f s by s we can apply partial fraction method instead of convolution theorem almost all the problems on convolution theorem you can use it by partial fraction method that is a powerful method to find the inverse of the Laplace transforms. This one is the unique it is we cannot replace by any method easily you can recognize the tan inverse cot inverse any trigonometry functions and log of functions directly apply this theorem and obtain the results. So, this concludes the overall of the inverse transforms to find the inverse Laplace transforms uh, you, you need to know the Laplace transform of all the standard functions then only you can find the inverse of any function of s. So, I hope uh, everything I have covered about the inverse problems. Thank you one and all.